Well, thank you very much, and I'm very happy to be here, and I thank you all for inviting me. I have to speak about my palladium research, which could take a long time, so I've abbreviated for you. <laughs> and uh, let me start with the first picture I have. Palladium Reactions for Organic Synthesis, I've called it. Very broad title because I have a lot of odds and ends that I have to fit into one title. Uh, the uh, basic reaction which I've studied mostly is the one shown here on this picture. The addition of organic halides to palladium metal to give organopalladium species which then will react with alkenes such as the one I've shown here. They go by way of a 1-2 addition reaction, and that one and ultimately ends up, if there's a beta hydrogen to the palladium, ends up eliminating palladium hydride and gives a, a substituted alkene as a product. The reaction is made catalytic if you put an amine in there to convert this hydride that's formed uh, back into palladium metal and a salt of the amine. So it's a catalytic reaction, a way of putting aryl and other groups on the palladium which do not have eliminatable beta hydrogens, SP cube bonded hydrogens. So it uh, works well for aromatics and some heterocycle and a uh, few other odds and ends molecule, but mostly aromatic is it's uh, useful for. Now the stereochemistry of this reaction is looking very complicated here, but really I've shown too much on one slide. I think it's the problem, not the chemistry. The uh, ad addition of the organopalladium compound to the double bond is shown in that first step there. Uh, now let me use the pointer here. If I can... Uh, I should have learned this before I got here, I guess. <laughs> Just push it. Okay, that sounds simple enough. Okay. Well, the addition of these organopalladium species, which we generally don't isolate, although you can if the L groups are arylphosphenes, uh, we make them in situ usually and they will then react with alkenes such as this cis uh, uh, alkene that I have here. Through a pi complex, we believe, which then adds to the double bond, the phenyl goes on one carbon and the uh, uh, palladium on the other, and, it, and addition can occur in both directions, and it uh, does actually, so you get mixtures of two different uh, types of uh, adducts. These adducts then uh, undergo a final elimination of the palladium hydride species through a pi complex probably, and then you lose the palladium, it could be recycled then, and you get the substituted alkene as a product. And it's a stereospecific reaction. If you start with cis, cis uh, uh, olefin, then the product is a specific uh, olefin. If you start with the trans uh, product, it gives a opposite isomer. So it's a stereospecific way of arylating a double bond. Yes, I'm trying to change here. Thank you. Well, we, we use a phosphine with this reaction. It doesn't work without it, so you need to have a, a triaryl phosphine, one that's uh, not easily oxidized. Triphenylphosphine is the first one we try, but it really doesn't work very well. You get only a few percent yields of products. So it, it uh, turns out that if you have an orthol methyl group on the phosphorus, it works a lot better. And that's because the organic group that you're adding here, the 4-bromophenol in this case, arylates the phosphine if you don't have orthol methyl groups on your phosphine group. So that uh, then it, it uh, does the chemistry you want and not arylating these uh, phosphines. So uh, it works very well for a wide variety of, of different uh, uh, aryl 
phosphine groups. And uh, it's a very useful reaction for making these kind of derivatives. Uh, you can add, in this case, we're adding bromophenol. It adds to the methyl acrylate to give a methyl uh, hydroxycinamate as the product. And we tried a lot of different phosphines, and there's nothing uh, significant there to speak about. So we'll move on to the next one. Okay, thank you. Now, this reaction is quite versatile, and you can use all kinds of different uh, alkenes and, and uh, bromo compounds. And this is a sort of an exotic example where we use bromothiophene and uh, vinyl pyridine, and the reaction goes quite well. I didn't put the yield down here, but it's very good. So this is a very nice way to make uh, various uh, still bean type molecules. We, do, we use rather high temperatures because the reaction is rather slow, but nonetheless it works well. You get good yields. I didn't put the yield here, but it is quite high, and it's a, a very useful way of making things of this type should you have a need for them. Okay. So, thank you. You can also use alkenes and substitute them with the vinyl bromides and similar uh, materials, iodides will work, chlorides under elevated temperatures, and even hexatriene is stable enough to survive this reaction, although the yield is not terrific, but uh, we did not try very hard to get this yield up. I think you could probably do better if you wanted to work on this for a while. But anyway, it's an easy way to make things like this pentane, which I think would be a challenge any other way, especially so easily. Thank you. Now, vinyl bromides like uh, this isopropenyl bromide here work uh, well in this chemistry. They add to the palladium zero compound, a phosphine complex. We put these triarylphosphines phosphines in there, and uh, you can put in palladium acetate or something like that, which will oxidize some of the material present and go down to the palladium zero species, which then reacts with the vinyl bromide, like a Grignard reaction, sort of. It uh, adds to the palladium. Then it's reactive toward other double bonds, like in this uh, uh, butenol. The uh, vinyl group adds to the terminal carbon, palladium to the internal carbon, and uh, we get an adduct like this, although we have never isolated these adducts because they're too unstable. We're quite sure they're there because of the products we get. Elimination of palladium hydride occurs next to give this unsaturated hydride complex, which then dissociates and gives the unsaturated ketone as product. Then the hydride can be recovered by reacting it with an amine like piperidine, which takes away the HBr and gives back the palladium zero species, which then can be used over again. So it's catalytic in palladium. Okay. You can make cyclic compounds as well. This bromodiene here will cyclize because the ring size is favorable with piperidine as the base orthotolophosphine and palladium acetate, 100 degrees for 66 hours. Now, it's a long time, a very slow reaction, but you can't go much higher in temperature because the palladium starts oxidizing double bonds then, so uh, you need to be patient if you want to use this kind of chemistry. 71, that's isolated yield, but we didn't really knock ourselves out trying to get the yield up higher. I think you could do better with a little effort, but anyway, it works quite well. Next, please. Uh, I don't know what this is doing in here. This, this was me many years ago. <laughs> uh, when I was a young budding chemist, I guess I could say. Uh, that must have been at least uh, 15 or so years ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, these are my students at the University of Delaware listed here who uh, participated in this research. 
I haven't had time to talk about all their research, obviously, in such a short time. But anyway, they uh, work with me and, uh, and help me with my research at Hercules. Then, uh, the, when I moved to the University of Delaware, I got support from the National Science Foundation and the Petroleum Research Fund, who uh, supported my research then. So, thank you very much for your attention.